current economic situation, uh, as we all know, is not very normal. Uh, we are facing two unprecedented uh, shocks. The first coming from the massive earthquake and the second coming from the blockades at the border in the, in the southern side. These two uh, unexpected events have caused a lot of destruction of the ongoing economic activity. And in the meantime, also restrain some of our efforts to move faster in economic development. But having said that, uh, it's not that we cannot recover from the crisis. Uh, the current economic uh, slowdown is a temporary phenomenon. Uh, we haven't lost big infrastructures other than the earthquake one. Uh, and then uh, we have the basic uh, condition for the economic uh, activities uh, have been intact. So once we have a normalcy at the border point, particularly in terms of the supply of fuel and industrial raw materials uh, and the construction materials, of course, the situation will come back to normalcy. Uh, the only thing is that we have lost some uh, production in between. Manufacturing have lost some production, tourism and hotel industry have lost some business. Uh, and uh, this season of agriculture, the winter season, when uh, agriculture needs fertilizer, irrigation and other interventions, and they are missing this season. So, uh, having said that, I would say that uh, even though we will not be performing uh, so much good this year, but we'll keep our momentum going from the next fiscal year. Yes. It's not wise to keep people expecting on inflation first, uh, and uh, not to compare the abnormal time price rise to stagflation. Mm -hmm. This is a kind of cyclical price rise. Stagflation is a permanent type of behavior when you have years and years of low, low economic growth and high inflation. If you are just comparing months and saying stagflation, I think that's not a wise step. And second, uh, uh, we have just touched double-digit inflation in a couple of months. Yeah. And that we know is only because of the blockade. So once the situation comes to normalcy, everything uh, would be corrected. So I don't buy this idea. And there is no need for any agency to be provocative on inflation because that raises market expectation yeah. and that only deteriorates matters. So I don't think this is wise to any agency, uh, the government agencies in particular, uh, to provoke the market this way. Yeah. Well, 2% is still uh, a kind of uh, optimal, I would say optimum uh, expectation because uh, we are expecting uh, the blockade in the border, border to be normal in, in a very short time. So somebody are even talking negative growth rate. We haven't, we haven't about that idea because we know this uh, blockade doesn't long for, last for long. So I think uh, if we are, ha we are having a very low economic growth, this is on account of three reasons. First, agriculture already has performed bad because we didn't have good monsoon and, um, and that's also already having an impact. Second, uh, after the earthquake, the market linkages were broken down and uh, with the blockade in the border, industrial production has come down. So manufacturing is supposed to do not so well. The construction sector is also suffering because uh, the reconstruction work hasn't taken up fast and government uh, development spending hasn't uh, picked up and private sector investments in infrastructure and construction are very limited and now it's multiplied by the by the lack of construction materials and energy so these three sectors are likely to suffer more than others uh, and, and they have some uh, spillover effects in other areas also but basically i can see these three things and tourism of course is one where we lost uh, one season yeah. when tourists were supposed to come. So with that, I think uh, it's, it's obvious that the growth rate would be slower this time compared to last year. And the human development has three dimensions. One is the per capita income, 
and the other is the school accomplishment, particularly the years of schooling and school enrollment rate. And third is the longevity of the life. Uh, our longevity has not been affected. Our school performance has not been affected. Uh, so whatever effect uh, is there to just put our SDI by one percentage point low, uh, sorry, one unit low, is, is simply because of the income, per capita income. Uh, last year also we didn't have very high economic growth and uh, the, the, the growth in when we have slow economic growth compared to other neighboring countries which are close to our SDI perhaps we come one notch below so it's the income dimension which is affecting our human development others are should be okay well our prime minister has uh, has already addressed the nation to say that in one year's time load shedding would be ended uh, for that we need um, uh, at least 400 megawatt capacity worth of uh, electricity, at least. And our ongoing uh, hydroelectricity projects uh, will only perhaps uh, deliver uh, 100 plus megawatt in, in one year's time. Uh, because Melamji, sorry, in the that the Tamakoshi project has been stalled for some time because of the earthquake. Uh, we are still uh, having hassles with Chamelia and some other projects, including Kulekhani Thar. So uh, there would be uh, less likelihood that uh, we can um, end uh, load shedding with our hydroelectricity projects. Now then we have to move to alternate energy and this is where we are talking about solar and wind energy and also some biogas and other sources of energy. Uh, we have made some progress in that. We have uh, recently investment board also has uh, been asked to work further on wind energy. Uh, the, the Center for Alternate Energy has been asked to go for alternate energy sources. And we have been working to develop a kind of regulatory and the uh, operational system whereby the alternate energy which are often off-grid electricity systems uh, come to the grid system. So we, we are now working towards preparing the procedures and the modality of doing power purchase agreement and the whole feasibility of uh, linking these alternate energy sources to the regular electricity grid. In that, the role of Ministry of uh, Energy would be critical and that of uh, electricity authority would be important but we are trying to coordinate and facilitate these activities. This coordination problem arises because of so many regulatory agencies and hydropower projects right from land acquisition to uh, yeah. EIA to forest uh, cutting trees and to taxation to PPA and then the financial closures, so many things and the obstructions in the construction site, which are administrative matters. I have no idea of uh, how or where the cabinet decisions are not adhered to or complied by the respective ministries. But I can see that there are a lot of uh, misunderstanding or misperceptions about projects, the hydropower projects. Decisions made in the IBN are also not timely or sufficiently uh, addressed or executed by the line ministries. So it is uh, it is where we need to follow up the implementation and a strong monitoring of those decisions would be necessary. And if some cabinet decisions are not uh, implemented, uh, uh, there should be a mechanism of uh, proper monitoring and taking action against the, against the institution, organization, or the office which uh, doesn't honor the cabinet decision. There should not be any kind of impunity to that. First uh, task of the next year's budget and program would be uh, to bring the economy into normal economic growth path. Uh, through first, as I said before, uh, massively undertaking the reconstruction work. Second, uh, addressing some of the setbacks that appear through the blockade and then continuing these uh, projects of national pride in a faster way 
More to that, we have to work in several areas like now that we have the uh, federal setup with provincial and local governments, our, our, our priority would be to see that these uh, provincial headquarters are properly linked by road or air and they have uh, some administrative uh, infrastructures present in the uh, provincial headquarters uh, and then uh, we have to see that uh, this provincial, uh, the provinces have uh, some connectivity across the board, north or south. So that we have to put in our mind and also we are talking about now the trade diversification, so many things. So north-south corridors would be important, along with completion of the middle highway and the coastal highways. Those would be critical interventions because they integrate our economy from east to west and south to north. So uh, that is our priority. But having said that, uh, we have also to see how the directive principles the fundamental rights enshrined in the constitution could be gradually implemented through programs and budgets because we have new constitution now. And there are so many fundamental rights that we have to honor. And the directive principles also say something about economic and social development. So we'll see how those could be carried through the budgetary process. Well, this, uh, this blockade I, I think is a temporary phenomenon. That should not derail the whole uh, possibility or, or the opportunity we have for foreign investors in this country. But what we need to do to garner more foreign investment or attract more foreign investment in the country uh, are manifold. Uh, first, we have to set a rule of law. Uh, and we, we they, they, they need to be convinced that the law prevails, courts are independent, judgments are made uh, independently, uh, the victim can get justice, uh, no investment would be nationalized or confiscated, uh, and uh, arbitration could be done in a, uh, in a fair way. So this is something we have to ensure, and our court system is already there, which, which, which is a good thing, and the separation of power through our new constitution has even reinforced it. Uh, and, uh, that also includes uh, protecting the property right, including the intellectual property right, both kind of physical, financial and then the intellectual property rights we have to protect and the legal system must address it. Uh, the second aspect of it is um, the business administration, the governance aspect. How fast can we approve uh, the business, like from registration of a company, to licensing and then to clearing these uh, environmental aspects and the other social and environmental aspects, how fast can we address those concerns? And uh, finally, it is the kind of exit. The investors are not here forever. They also need proper exit. So exit and bankruptcy policies have to be in place. We are trying to change our bankruptcy laws and rules and uh, we are also trying to simplify the repatriation uh, activities or uh, processes. So I think that should create some enabling environment for investors to come in and also to go when they don't need to stay back in the country. For the investment board of Nepal, I would, I would think that this is a window of opportunity to invite foreign investors. And we should not only be thinking as being as a shopkeeper whereby the clients come and we take uh, some responses. We could be more proactive and solicit investors to come in with uh, huge capital, uh, more on, on the direct investment than on borrowed fund. Uh, and uh, after the projects are approved, approved the investment board could also take some actions to see the implementation aspect and monitor the progress and report to the Prime Minister if there are delays in the implementation. And in that process, we should be doing things faster than now because if we get long time for the projects to be developed, 
detailed surveys to be done in several, several months, financial projects done in years, and the project comes in five, six years, we are not going to develop faster. So we, we have to reduce the whole project uh, formulation to implementation period, and we need to get results early on. Uh, so my best wishes to IBM to carry forward this kind of activity.